Hello everyone, and welcome to Straight Chilling. Each week we watch and review a horror film for your entertainment. You can send all questions and comments to straightchillingpodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget to keep chilling. Shall we straight chilling? Serial killing? Five cold fillers on the mic, got you reeling. Five star ratings from the floor to the ceiling. If you catch a one star, no time for feelings. Got a demon DJ on the ones and twos. By the name El Sabato, don't get confused. So grab a seat by the fire, roast them all over two. And prepare to hear the legend of the straight chilling crew. What up, nerds, and welcome to another girthy episode of Straight Chilling, the weekly horror movie review show where you chill and we kill, slice, dice, and chop up yet another horror movie. My name's Bob, and I'll be your host for the evening. This is episode number 277, recorded on Wednesday, July 22nd, 2020. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the winner of the July poll pick, which was Anaconda from 1997. Before we get into the review, let me introduce everyone else on the show. First up, calling in from Northern California, we got our boy Randy Gandy, G. Landy. What's up, man? Hello, gentlemen. Hello, gentlemen. How's Hello. it going? It's a pleasure to have you on board, as always, sir. Well, thanks. You know, pleasure's all yours, I guess. Talk about snakes. Can't wait. Uh, let's talk about snakes. Talk about snakes. <laughs> last, talk about very real snakes. Last but not least, joining us all the way from Southern Korea, we got our boy Soju. What's up, man? What up? It's a show boy. My anaconda don't want none unless you got yabos, hun. <laughs> Stains. Oh my god. There it is. There it is. Randy's <laughs> on my level. Randy is on my level. <laughs> All right. Thank God. All right, for that. sir. So lot stains. So lot. I don't know. <laughs> it just really blended that whole thing up in a Vitamix, didn't I? I don't know. Uh huh. <laughs> well, I appreciate the effort. It's not a very high level that we're aiming for. It's a low, low level. No, no, it's about on par with this movie. <laughs> Bob, it takes a lot of it, it takes a lot of effort to be this good. It does indeed. <sighs> You're telling me, oh. Meng. Um, before we talk about snakes, let's tackle some housekeeping really quick. Uh, first up, another reminder, August poll pick is currently posted over on our Patreon website. If you support us at the $5 level or above, you get the chance to vote on a movie we're talking about this August. The theme for August is VHS and the movies you can vote between are ring you VHS two and terror vision. Ah, yes, an entirely uncontroversial poll that nobody <laughs> could possibly be too upset or invested in. Bob, <laughs> how are those numbers looking today? Monday, yeah. they were looking wild. Yeah, uh, there's, there was a lot there's of a lot of There's a lot of jockeying going on, yeah. fucking <laughs> attack ads and fucking yeah. straw polls, the Over. whole goddamn shebang. Over on the Slack channel, uh, there, there's been a lot of conversation and uh, even controversy over this poll, and I'll admit uh -huh. to uh, taking part in it for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, That's because Bob started campaigning over I did. here. Well, after the last show uh -huh. we recorded, you know, I was definitely campaigning for TerraVision to win, and we picked up a couple of votes uh, pretty quickly, and uh, TerraVision ended up j just being like a few votes behind VHS, too, so I hit up the Slack channel. I was like, yo, we just actually, we're just I think it was away. ahead. And well, well it we got to be it, ahead. Yeah, yeah, it became ahead. I was like, yeah, we're just a few votes away. And then people started jumping uh -huh. on board. Uh -huh. And I was like, sweet. People started, you know, not voting with their conscience or their oh, scruples. Uh, being told, people then, being told what to vote for. No, I don't know what you're so smug it, about, Juice. No, <laughs> I have then, no idea where the fuck you get off. Juice jumps in <laughs> and starts talking shit about me. And then people start changing their votes. And then now there's BHS only one dude is ahead again. There's only one dude in this podcast that can be above it all, and that's your boy right here. <laughs> all right. That's true. That's Randy, true. Randy taking the high road. <laughs> Everybody switch your vote to Ringu. I'd be fine with that, too. Ringu. 
yeah, not Ringu. Look, honestly, they're all good movies. That, I mean, I'd be happy to talk Only about them all, but it, I, I could absolutely advocate for Ring, Ringu, and I yeah. have I have the talking points, but I've chosen to not <laughs> obliterate the both of you. You know what? I was fine to leave well enough alone, Bob. He just oh. couldn't stand that Terravision I, was losing. Couldn't take it. He just couldn't I do, take it. I do believe that Terravision... And now you must punish. Terravision is somewhat of an underdog, not because it's like a better movie uh-huh. than Ring Your VHS 2. Just, just think because 80 movies are the best, no, right, Bob? No, 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 Mr. No, 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 elite no. over there, elite horror. Not at all. <laughs> I, I think it's probably the more underseen of the three options. It's super goofy, too. The other two are a little more serious. And this is the second time I've put Terravision on a, on a poll, so I was trying to amp it up a little bit. It's not looking yeah. super positive. <laughs> I all right that's over big, now i can't for a big <laughs> <Yeah>. foot <laughs> anyways get your votes in before the end of july and we'll see uh which of these three movies we're going to be talking about in august um what else we got okay over on the uh the ten dollar level on our patreon page uh we got a brand new mini cast which juice was talking about unsolved mysteries just posted that today for your listening all right. pleasure all right. you solve any juice Dude, I know everything about it all. Oh, man. <laughs> everything about Omnipotent. it all. For $10, <laughs> you can learn all of the mystery solutions. Yep, Stains <laughs> explains it all. That's uh, <laughs> my new... <laughs> Much like new Clarissa. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to think of a theme song for that thing. I, I kept, it's all wow. Doug up here right now. There's no Clarissa left. Yeah, I got it. I'll tell. I'll tell you what you need to know. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, that famous Clarissa theme song. <laughs> so famous. You all know it. You all know how it goes. I want to be the very best. No <laughs> one ever was. Yeah. To explain it all is my real <laughs> test. <laughs> Some dudes climbing in my window. <laughs> Clarissa. Anyways. Man, this is um, Justin. I can't believe you know show. such an old, old, old show that is outside wow. of your age group. Right? I'm really into that retro <laughs> shit. No, <laughs> you're really real Urban Outfitters type of guy. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why you're campaigning for Twitter. VHS too, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, all right. So yeah, check out our mini cast over on Patreon. And um, also, last bit of Patreon news: we got a brand new Patreon supporter. We got to give a shout out to a big. Big thanks to Terry for signing up and showing us some love over on Patreon. It definitely Terry. means a lot. Hell yeah, Terry. Terry's tearing it up over here, and we're loving oh, it. Oh, we're sorry about that, Terry. I'm not. That was not, <laughs> that was not rehearsed. I'm not sorry at all. <laughs> Much uh, like everything we do. <laughs> as is, Got scary Terry over here. All right, let's go. Uh, as is tradition around these parts, we owe you the straight chilling salute. So this one goes out. Terry. Rigatuni. <laughs> Holy no. shit. Okay, no. okay, okay. Well, let's do it again. Yeah, you gotta do it right. You gotta do it right. Of course, Bob's just gonna talk right through it. Of course. Barrel of course. rolling through. Rigatuni. Iron fist him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah. Uh, thank you again, Terry. That's pretty much all we got happening over on Patreon. Uh, Juice, you got anything new? Yes, sir, I do. I've got a new video game review uh, for Bioshock Infinite up on the YouTubes. I decided to promote it whilst very intoxicated. Oh, yes, and- you did. <laughs> yeah. Multiple times. Yeah. I was like, oh, shit. I forgot I scheduled this to go up. Let me go ahead and promote it while stumbling drunkenly through the empty alleyways of Seoul. That sounds um, seems like a great plan. Real sad. That's, in- <laughs> that's the beginning yeah. of like the, like the sequel to Tusk or some shit. That's not... Yeah. <laughs> In, in the promotion, idea. I had a call to action to help me beat the YouTube algorithm's ass by yes. commenting. <laughs> like We're going to take the algorithm, personify it <laughs> into the ass. form of a human, and then so, beat it. Are ass. we going to slap its ass? Uh, yeah, no, maybe. no, not unless it becomes a patron. Slap it in the ass? <laughs> yeah, okay, it's not okay. supporting us yet. You're right. <laughs> um, so uh, that is up if you enjoy 
for Vigi Games. And that rounds out the entire Bioshock trilogy. So I have now covered all three. If you um, are curious which one is my favorite, I think you probably know. But um, <laughs> I do not. I have no <laughs> well, idea. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, these are my good friends. Here. What's your favorite Biochalk movie? <laughs> <laughs> movie. So you can check that out on YouTube. A little bonus material. I also did. This is the this is going out the last week of July, which is when this poll is going up. So I want to make a campaign promise to everyone. Out there. <laughs> what? <laughs> so wow. I I want to say this. I want to take the time. VHS two is currently leading in the polls. I will say though, we covered this movie before. We yeah. have covered. S2 before back in the day. In fact, I believe it was Brad's first pick and Bob was not available to record it. I recorded it, but when I sent the file to Bob, he couldn't get it to work. I still this is have the, uh, that excuses, file. Excuses segment. <laughs> no, yeah. I still have that file. If BHS2 wins, I will make this lost hidden episode available. I okay. will put oh. it up. <laughs> oh, okay. So we're just incentivizing now. Yeah, this hey, is how about this? Lost, if, long, if any other movie episode. wins, <laughs> if any other movie wins, we will do that also because fuck Justin. Nope. Wait, I'm the only wait, one who's wait. got it. So exactly where are you posting this? Dude, I will find a place to post. I'll post it all available. So YouTube somewhere. I want everyone I to know that there is a gun to your head and the one Why? holding the, the trigger is <laughs> no, just... No, no, no. Just, I, you know, I'm just making some campaign promises over here uh, that I will deliver on. <laughs> have you uh, Have you actually listened to it, man? I could never get it to work. Yeah. Um, you have? That's a no. <laughs> that's a no. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, right. I have like, it's, so, I found it recently. It is an MP3 file, and I was able to hear it. I didn't listen to the whole hour okay. and a half. I couldn't even it. get like, it to play. Oh. It was like corrupt. It, it wouldn't even, like, my computer just wouldn't read it at all. So, let's see. We got oh. Campaign Promise Soju, and we got Whistleblower Bob, and in the middle, we have <laughs> nothing for anybody who votes however yeah. Justin says. So, you might get a bonus episode, maybe. We'll, you know, we'll see about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sweet deal. All right. Is that all you got, Juice? You done with your that propaganda? That is all also, I, I want. I, I also want to point out that uh, recordings of our old episodes are not an incentive for anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except for maybe I don't know, like like getting your uh, tubes tied or some shit. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. So if you wanna if you wanna get that, I guess uh, you know just. Do whatever Justin tells you to do. You and, could also just harass Justin and dox his ass. DJ Anal Dox is ready to <laughs> take calls. You can do that too, for sure. All right, that's it for the housekeeping. It's time to get into the main event. We're talking about Andaca- <laughs> Andaconda. And- Andaconda. That's what in high school. Ba-ba-bump. Andaconda. <laughs> <laughs> randy has got it where it counts, you know what I'm saying? In his draws. We're talking about Anaconda from 1997, and we're kicking it off with the back of the box. What's on the back of the box? Tell us! Um, I actually do have the back of the box here that I'm going to read. All right. Oh, um, and, this um, is an official copy. This was actually a gift from you, Randy, to me for Christmas a couple years ago, I want to say. Christmas present, I think. Most people would Remember, take that Randy? as a hint, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> we get it. You got a big dingle danger. Stop rubbing it in. Oh, uh, well, you know me. I'll be stroking. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, all right. So uh, we got Anaconda here. 1997. It was directed by Louis Losa, uh, written by Hans Bauer and Jim Cash, starring John Voigt, Jennifer Lopez, Eric Stoltz, Ice Cube, uh, Owen Wilson, some other folks. And the synopsis is as follows. A documentary film crew headed by anthropologist Steve Kale, played by Eric Stoltz, and director Terry Flores, played by J-Lo, traveled down the Amazon River in search of a mysterious Indian tribe. On their journey, they save a man, Paul Cerrone, played by John Voight, from a sinking boat. He offers to help... You guys, uh, going camping? (laughs) That's uh, actual audio from John Voight in this movie. 
Uh, <laughs> that, would, that would be an improvement. He offers to help in their search uh, for the tribe, but he's actually a snake hunter looking for the legendary anaconda. When an accident leaves Kale unconscious, Sarone takes <laughs> charge of the boat, leaving the rest of the crew in grave danger. Dude, Randy's got that uh, face down. <laughs> I'm mean, no, screenshot. No favor. Right, do it again. I got a screenshot. It's a it's a permanent scowl. <laughs> okay. I got Dude, this man does nothing but but scowl the whole movie in a like it's like every I said this when we were watching. I watched it with some people on uh, yeah. on Zoom, and it's yeah. like it's like the stage directions on every line that he has was stare rapingly. <laughs> God damn. I'm serious. <laughs> that's, that's Look kind at of this the vibe. man. It's, it's permanent. That, it is a, that is not moving. Perma scale. Yeah. It's rough. Uh gentlemen, had you seen this movie before? And would you recommend people check it out? Randy, kick us off. <laughs> oh man, this is a double edged question this week. Uh yes, I have <laughs> seen this movie, and actually this I don't know exactly the first time I saw this movie, but it had to have been it was definitely at a neighbor's house between playing uh, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. So I was nine wow. or 10 at most. Wow. And it was certainly one of the first horror movies I saw. And we were so proud for being like fucking elementary school kids watching real horror, we thought. And um, it was like, it was, I don't know, it was kind of a flashpoint for me to like get one, one of several movies that like got me down the, the pipeline into horror. And um, I would say that if you are interested in 90s schlock horror, the way that other people are interested in 80s schlock horror, like if you enjoy, I know what you did last summer. If you enjoy, I still know what you did last summer. Yeah. <laughs> you might enjoy this movie. This is not a movie for everyone though. It is a product of its time. And um, certainly in, in the, in the graphics department and things like that, the writing is not, uh, we'll, we'll get to the review, but I'm saying, it's not a strong recommend for me, but it has a special place in my heart is what I'm getting at. Right on. Light recommend from Randy. Juice, had you seen it before? Would you recommend people check it out? I had seen this before, um, and it has been quite a while, like Randy, since I have seen this film. And I it was significantly worse this time around than it was <laughs> in my mind. I will say that. And so I think this movie exists for the people who kind of live through it um, as 90s kids. Um, I don't think it really, other than that, other than just like pure nostalgia almost, like even as a creature feature, it's, it's pretty rough. Um, it doesn't separate itself in any kind of special way, I don't think. So um, I, I generally, I guess, I don't wouldn't typically recommend. I guess. My uh, anaconda don't want none unless you got buns, hon. Heard that? Yabos, yeah, hon. I have buns. Bob, you picked this <laughs> for the poll pick uh, to oh. go, and you campaigned for it against Jaws. So why why did you do that? Ah, uh, yes, <laughs> I did not campaign for anything. The people uh -huh. the people chose this one outright. Uh -huh. um, the people. The people. <laughs> yeah, I'd seen this movie a handful of times before. Um, I just, I have this like crazy, like distinct memory of being like nine years old when this movie came out and riding in the trunk of my parents' car because my parents had like a blazer, which our family, you know, was massive and I was the youngest. So people would sit in the seats. They'd be filled like my sisters and my parents or whatever and then i just like climb in the trunk and ride very unsafely because there's no get in the trunk there's no seat belt or anything <laughs> like that <laughs> that uh, explains a get lot. in the wheel wheel bitch <laughs> right. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> really really glad that my parents bought a vehicle that was too small for our family uh yep. so yeah sub 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 bob he's used to just crawling in, in the trunk as told so that makes <laughs> yeah so i remember riding back there and like my sisters and one of their friends were like in the car talking about having seen this movie and my sister's friend was talking about the end. Uh, there's a specific thing that happens with John Voight. We haven't dropped the spoiler warning yet, so I won't say exactly what happens. Uh, but it's super gross. And I remember her describing that scene, and my nine-year-old brain was just like exploding. Like, why would anybody watch this shit? What, it's disgusting. How can you be entertained uh -huh. by this? It didn't make any sense. And then I like went and well, watched it. Well, la-di-da. La-di-da. 
I eventually saw it and it terrified me as a young kid, but then, you know, you see it when you're a teenager or however old and it's, it's super campy. It's funny. It's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's anything but scary. Um, but I just, I just have, I remember being so scared, so fucking scared by this. Um, <laughs> and it was also like, uh, it's, it's sort of like a nineties time capsule movie with freaking JLo and ice cube in it. And it's just, it's so, of and its Owen time. Wilson, Owen Wilson. Yeah. I, I, wow. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I like that about it. I like the vibe. Um, so yeah, I I had seen it before, and I would recommend it because it's super goofy and cheesy. And if you want a goofy, cheesy creature feature, I think this movie definitely delivers. Um, it's a fun one, I think. So yeah, let's go ahead and drop <laughs> drop that uh spoiler warning. Randy's got the perma scal on tonight. I got it. <laughs> uh, spoiler warning. Uh, did you type this up? You only had a yeah. couple days. Yeah, yeah. I typed this uh, synopsis up. It's actually uh, uh, one of my shorter ones because let's be honest, there's not a whole lot of. Plot. Oh, it's o- it's only J. <laughs> it's only a uh, uh, Game of Thrones length then. Right. <laughs> uh huh. All right. Let's see what you got. All right. Here is the synopsis of Anaconda. J Lo and her five person crew set out to make it. Justin is not having it. Sorry. (laughs) Justin immediately immediately stood up and walked away. He's going to go take a dump. (laughs) I'm going to wait till he gets back to read this. In the meantime, let's just talk shit about Justin. Oh, mini social hour. How you doing, Bo? (laughs) I'm good. How are you? You know, good. You know, I've been thinking a lot about something. You know what that is? What's that? Pumpkins. Thank you. Thinking a lot about pumpkins recently. Uh, It's it's officially Halloween season, based on the horrifying calendar that we have adopted here at Street. That's exactly right. That means I have not watched any Halloween's yet. It's a it's pumpkin season. It is, and I'm stoked about it. Uh, I mean, what's going to be your first first uh, Halloween uh, Halloween specific horror that you're going to watch this year? What do you think? Oh man. Um uh, I never watch Halloween until like the week of Halloween. You can't watch it too soon or else it'll it'll blow my brain in half. I just can't do it. Oh yeah. Um I usually reach for trick or treat on like October first. Like you yeah, know, very beginning of October. It's gotta be October for that one. I mean it's yeah. Like there are some movies like that's too specific to Halloween to go any earlier. Yeah, yeah, it's true. You wake up on that fucking first morning of October though, and you just mm. Something about it just feels right, man. You can reach for trick or treat real quick. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Really having a stretch for this asshole. What the fuck? Idle Hands is one that you can get into like September. I think it's pretty like Halloween specific, but not so much like trick or treat. You know? Yeah, yeah. I could That's get a good one. That. That's a good one. I don't know what I'm gonna pick. I think I might go with a Halloween movie, like like Halloween franchise movie, but it'll mm-hmm. probably be one of the the lesser entries just yeah. for the funsies of it you maybe a reach, four or a five i yeah. always like those personally for nostalgic reasons those would but, be good um, or even like oh welcome back so great synopsis you? bob all right yes all right. that oh, was no, the no. movie oh i'm so sorry uh, uh yeah. rob actually hasn't done that yet oh, we didn't want to leave you out god <laughs> we wanted to <laughs> make sure you were you were fully up rob, to speed. why don't you why don't you go ahead and like get yourself fluffed and prepped mm-hmm. and then slowly you know what i will the whole see, synopsis la, la, since we're making a since we're making a big deal out of this i will say what i was doing was making sure that that file works and it does <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, cute. vhs2 oh works i love how <laughs> insanely petty we all are it's <laughs> ridiculous uh, you brought this on your <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Here we go. J-Lo and her five-person crew set out to make a documentary about the Amazonian Shimishama tribe. They hire boat captain by the name of Mateo to help pilot them down the river as they shoot footage of the jungle and hope to eventually capture the elusive tribe on film. Along the way, they encounter failed priest turned snake hunter paul Cerrone, whose boat has been tangled in some branches they pick him up with the intention of dropping him off at the next tribe they come across but that doesn't work out uh the primary goal of the voyage is soon abandoned when steven gets a wasp stuck in his throat and Cerrone has to give him a tracheotomy to keep him alive now they need to find the quickest route to a hospital which Cerrone claims to know a shortcut uh, it becomes increasingly evident to the crew that Cerrone has them on a wild goose chase, and he's really just hunting the anaconda the whole time. Uh, Cerrone eventually tries to convince the crew to help him, 
uh, and promises that there's big money in it if they happen to capture this anaconda alive. The crew's not convinced. Uh, Around here, that means big money. Exactly. Uh, the crew's not convinced. At which point, Cerrone pulls out again and says they don't. Pulls out a gun and says they don't really have a choice. Uh, then, through multiple failed attempts to catch the snake and it killing the crew one by one, we're left with J Lo and Ice Cube searching an abandoned building for some fuel. Uh, Cerrone knocks them out and sets them up as bait for the snake. And they manage to narrowly escape while Cerrone gets eaten and regurgitated. And then finally, J-Lo and Ice Cube get some footage of the Shimishama tribe. Roll credits. There you go. Anaconda. That is right. a movie called Anaconda. Yep. <clears throat> That's it. So. Roll credits. <laughs> Me and Randy had a moment. <laughs> let's get into this. I'm really glad. I, I got to say, man, this is going to be a weird episode for me because I have in the course. How long have we been recording? Like like 10 minutes max. Uh, I've drank almost this entire tall boy of cider in that time <laughs> and unconsciously so. So we I have am lit right almost now. Almost been recorded nice. for 30 minutes. Just just for clarity. Oh, oh shit. Really? Well, then yeah. I'm just lightweight. I don't know. 26 minutes. Anyway, so this movie opens, which I, I didn't realize this until this viewing. It opens with fucking Danny Trejo, but they have yeah, somebody does. like voice over him. It doesn't sound like Danny Trejo at all. No, I think this is pre Trejo's like, yeah. like, Breakout. like before he's known, before he's a known entity in, yeah. in Hollywood. Cause he was, I believe, I don't remember what movie it was, but he was discovered like as a, as like a, a, a um, I don't know, like a craft services guy or some shit. Somebody working on like the sidelines of a movie, and somebody's like, "All right, get in there. We need somebody to like <laughs> get shot or something," and just slowly built up his cred from there, which is fucking impressive. He was a legit like convict, right? He he served some time in prison. I believe so. For yeah, some, he's, yeah. And uh, yeah. I mean, good for that dude because he's like a known. Actor now. Oh yeah, it was definitely not this movie that did that though, because this, yeah, I'm yeah. seeing movies from like the 80s yeah. from him for sure. So. Yeah. Well, his voice is like fairly. I don't know if I'd use the word iconic, but it's like extremely recognizable, and it's a big part of Danny well, Trejo when you go to cast him in something. And it's so weird that right. they would dub over him in this. I don't know. I guess because it's like a port, like they're everybody there speaking Portuguese. He's a Mexican dude. Maybe it's, well, I don't. I, I'm, yeah. I guess I'm giving this movie way too much credit by thinking yeah. they're going for that level of authenticity. But well, also uh, that's the only thing I could think of off the cuff. Talking about like the Portuguese or whatever, and I guess I'm not. I don't know. Like it's also a movie where John Voight plays a Portuguese man. <laughs> well, that, well, that's the thing. You were you were watching it on Zoom, and I was watching it on your Zoom cast, and uh-huh. you had the subtitles on, and half the time it would be like speaks in French, speaks in Portuguese, speaks in Spanish, and I was like, are they just like picking <laughs> random guessing. languages for him to speak? Oh, maybe I don't <laughs> no. know. I, I didn't catch that, but I don't. I wonder if yeah, I wonder if maybe he's just like all right now say sacre blue just whatever i, I thought <laughs> like, at one point it said speaks latin like i picked out i think at least three different languages where it was like well, speaking I and i was, was like how latin, accurate is this there was some latin that was like lore related i think yeah. where they're like mm-hmm. discussing like you know whatever like like academic shit some but those, like you, if that's true then i don't know what the fucking deal is if that's <laughs> true even maybe the people that like were listening back were like i can't tell this sounds kind of <laughs> well some of those subtitles yeah. i think are like auto generated and if you're you're streaming a lot of times something. that's true yeah like if you have it on disc obviously that's not the case but if you're streaming something it's auto-generated and maybe it's just doing its best guess to to translate real and those quick. are yeah. and those yeah. are also like really not two different languages right. so i think that's probably that could that could be the case i don't know but anyway yeah we got danny treo in the opening of this movie and uh you know a snake the it's anaconda white bursting like, yeah, through the I, floorboards and kills him pretty much immediately yeah yeah you'd like to see some more trejo right dude i want to see more no, trejo and i also want to hear trejo yeah. i want to hear trejo's voice i don't know i guess that's maybe my modern lenses looking back at it but it, like i would love to hear Don- danny trejo at least like get his oh shit moment i can't do a danny trejo but whatever his <laughs> voice saying that sounds like <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the snake doesn't kill him. He shoots himself in the head. Oh, that's true. Yeah, he he goes yeah. down. He goes down. Uh, with the temple. That's right. Taking yeah. it out. Yeah, that's right. I do. I like when the snake is like bursting through the floorboards. They've got like a real intense slow motion shot of the nails like flying up in front of his face. Um, yeah, I thought that was a nice touch. Well, yeah. The- <sighs> I don't remember how much you see in the first part of this movie of the snake, but when you do see it, it's not super impressive. Um, so 
I was not like, I don't know this movie. Like it used to scare me like Rob, like yeah. I, I, it wasn't because of a description or anything like that, but like it was one of the first horror movies I saw. So I was horrified. I was a kid and like looking back at it now, I'm like, how did I find this terrifying in any, <laughs> on any level? There, there's yeah. nothing, there's no tension in this movie that makes sense anyway. <laughs> I don't know. There's no tension in this movie that makes it more tense than any kind of, drama or any you know any kind of i mean there's a hint where they're like maybe in the water and you think like something's there but there's like episodes like to take it to the 90s there's episodes of the real world that are more tense than this movie so i I don't know what's going on here but when i was a kid it really shook me up on on not not a lot i didn't have nightmares or anything like that but it definitely was like yeah this is a scary movie for sure this is what scary movies are i'm part of this now yeah Um, i think when you're a kid too like you don't you haven't developed that whole like S- uh, six sense of like you know they're setting up a scare or they're not yeah, setting up a scare. That's so true. It's probably just comes from yeah experience. You're always of on the edge of your seat. Dozens of fucking movies. Yeah, yeah. I also used to get scared by Are You Afraid of the Dark? So yeah, I mean, me too. You know. exactly. <laughs> the intro. I, I'll stand by the fact that the intro to that that show is a little bit scary. It's cr- it's well done. It's creepy. Yeah. But um, yeah. But yeah. You're you're just thinking blood and guts are going to happen at any moment as a kid because you don't you haven't developed that to know otherwise. Like you haven't seen a yeah a hundred horror movies yet or whatever. That's probably true. It's it's gonna be hard hard to like really like for me to make put this on a on a metric that I would put any other movie on. It's gonna be tough tough with this one, just because it's like such a it's such a nostalgia trip on a personal and a cultural level for me. Yeah. But it's also real dumb. <laughs> it is. It's fun though. I don't know. I enjoyed watching it because it is. Huh? silly and also a bit of a time capsule with freaking yeah. j-lo in a leading role like you know that doesn't happen Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> exactly um freaking ice cube killing it and i'm Dude, always down hey, with owen, owen wilson, wilson. Yeah. owen wow. wilson actually <laughs> in in the 90s he he was in like some of these horror movies he was in yeah. the haunting yeah. Um, yeah, which was he, in the lit. He also was in. I mean, it's not like technically horror. He was in the Cable Guy. Um, oh yeah, he was hilarious in that fucking movie too. So I, I mean, he kind of this was started out a little bit with like kind of doing these like little horror roles or whatever. Which yeah, is he cool. He definitely like he he was not above like doing all these sorts of things before the Wes Anderson train came honking for his yeah. uh, ticket. Mm-hmm. He uh he was willing to kind of like get into shit with it whatever and I I appreciate that <laughs> like and I think it's like he never seemed too uh pretentious to me about what he picked to, what he chose to do he always just kind of like went in to do the job it seemed like so I like I like Owen Wilson yeah, I like personally. Him too. yeah I mean ever since Wedding Crashers I was definitely on board with Owen Wilson I freaking love that I movie. will say that I clocked him as a cooter pretty fucking quick in this movie when he started talking about how the jungle makes him so goddamn horny <laughs> but then I realized so that he's hilarious. in a relationship with the woman he was talking right. to so yeah. I, at the time I was like wow really putting in a strong early contention <laughs> and for then, cooter of the week Cohen they eventually uh, they take a jaunt out into the jungle for a quick bang in the middle of the night and they get chased oh, yeah. back out a bang by a wild the- boar <laughs> In a fucking wetlands jungle. There's yeah. no place more disgusting to like put <laughs> an, something into an orifice. I, I mean, can't think of a worse place. That'd be a pretty sweaty uh, session, if you know what I'm saying. It's not Whoa. just sweaty. It's like there's later in this movie, there's discussion about things that swim up your urethra. I don't know if I want to expose <laughs> myself to that in the so, jungle. <laughs> yeah, what, what uh, uh, the doctor, uh, Stephen Kale, says that the only thing he's afraid of is a tiny catfish which swims up to your urethra and then sticks out a bunch of barbs and just like makes a house. We'll there. get to that in trivia. Oh, interesting. <laughs> European style. <laughs> I will tell you all about that catfish and trivia. Mean, by the way, How- this is Eric Stoltz. <laughs> Is this the second? No, because we had bed between, but <laughs> the bed that eats between. But mm-hmm. um, Eric Stoltz was in Prophecy a couple episodes back as well, and I'm like, man, this guy really just naturally feels like a cooter. I also clocked him as a cooter in this movie, despite him not making out with a child in this particular movie, like the <laughs> other one. But um, it turns out like he was pretty much on the level the whole time. His just he's yeah. got a very smug attitude that really ran cooterdom yeah. down for he's, me. He's, he's got he's, slight red hair too. So yeah. I will like, get to the details and we'll decide whether or not he qualifies. <laughs> but for me, I don't know. Like a lot of what I took it like it just instantly him and Owen Wilson, the two of them, I was like, wow, this movie is just 
ramping up in the cooter section and then john Voigt arrives and the world collapses around the cooter question i it's just i just am curious at like how small is the catfish or like how big does your urethra have to be like i'm guessing that it's like a, a minnow what is the? I don't know. I guess trivia will tell all. Maybe a baby guess catfish. Oh, trivia will tell all. All right. All right. All right. Juice explains it all later in the episode. Yeah. <laughs> ba, dude, we need a new bump. <laughs> ba, 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 for trivia. <laughs> no. I mean, ba, 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 if, if you make it, however I'll play it. it goes. How it, however it. <laughs> That's how it goes. That's I'll make you make it. it I'll play it, and we'll all get sued by Viacom. All right. <laughs> Sounds like fun to me. Um. Yeah. Creepy ass John Voigt jumps aboard the ship. We're all trying to make a documentary. And he's John got, Voigt. He's he's something else, man. John Voigt. I don't know what like like we we watched fucking um Deliverance, and he is so good in that. And then we get to this, and I'm thinking about other <laughs> John Voigt roles. Him in this, and him in Holes, the movie Holes. And it's like this guy is in like <laughs> what movie? Holes. Okay. <laughs> holes. The movie holes. holes. Is holes. Thank you. Holes right. is holes. Thank you. And John Void is all up in them holes. Um, no, I don't like this guy is like just naturally repulsive. <laughs> it's, I don't know. It's in his, it's in his whole ethos to just be a repulsive human being. The way he stares at people as we've discussed. And as I cannot convey through this medium of audio is fucking rapey as shit <laughs> and it's, it's constantly like, rapey and he has constantly to like grimacy stretch the like muscles in his face constantly to get that look like it's, yeah. a, it's so <laughs> difficult and it like and that's just stacked on top of the fact that he's also <gasps> playing a portuguese man with the worst accent that cannot stay in line the entire movie what john boy has my same birthday <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> that's um <laughs> Congratulations. Right. I don't uh great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Neat. Score oh. one. Score Sounds one like for the stain. So <laughs> yeah, okay. I didn't know you were that old, but all right. Um <laughs> so yeah, this he's just he's also gross. he's playing, is, is he not gross? Like there's no other word I can think of that describes oh, yeah. he's <laughs> playing a failed priest who became a snake hunter. So like Which only comes up one time. How do you make that transition exactly? I'm career? guessing like does I mean, and again, this is probably giving way too much credit to this movie, but is he was he was he just making that up as a way of get, making himself seem trustworthy despite being the most disgusting human being to walk onto a boat and his Yeah, I mean he, he yeah. it actually it's pretty good manipulation I'll talk about when we get into the computer but I mean he he makes them depend on him even yeah, I, it does. even feels he, like Owen when Owen Wilson flips it doesn't even feel necessarily like he's completely driven by the money it's almost just cuz even Owen Wilson he's like like what the how the fuck are we gonna get out? It's almost like desperation. Like hey, like let's let like I if we all help it. this guy catch the snake, then like we can get out of here quicker. And then of course you know the money like makes it better. But it feels to me like a little bit like they're like fuck, we're stuck out here in the jungle. We don't know like what the fuck to do. And the guy, the only one guy who kind of knew what was going on, is is the uh, is the guy who got the wasp well, or whatever. And now they're like oh shit. I will say that like it definitely complicates the whole schism and it and it's a smart move for the movie to have him be indispensable in the first act of this movie. Yeah. He saves their asses and mm -hmm. he knows what he's talking about. The only other person that that is able to contend with him on on smarts is Eric Stoltz's character who gets taken out almost instantly in part by a wasp that we later find out was planted by yeah. Uh, John Voight's character so like I think that's pretty smart villain making uh, on, on one level I, I, I do appreciate that I don't know about if I agree about um, about Owen Wilson's turn I think that was pretty brazenly like well let's see we've already lost one guy who's definitely <laughs> dead we got one dude who's dying and we need to get him to the hospital which is the whole reason we came this way in the first place initially uh, yeah. and, but now because this dude dropped a million dollar price tag in front of my eyes i suddenly don't care if that dude lives that much don't forget about mateo either so mateo the boat yeah. captain when he <laughs> dies is when they're truly fucked up because he actually knows the river and could get them out nobody That's else really yeah. knows it other than him and john voigt um so when he gets uh, squeezed to death by 
the Anaconda, oh. that's when Voight like kind of puts all of his cards on the table and he's like, yo, we could make a shitload of money if we catch this thing. Are you guys down well, or and not? The, he has to, though, because we find out later that Mateo was on his payroll in some fashion. Yeah. So Well, they worked together at some point, like they knew him, but I don't think yeah. it was set up from the beginning, was it? I, no, I no, I, no later it. on, uh, well, no, later on the, uh, uh, Jennifer Lopez is, is confronting... Um, John Voigt about all this shit. He's like, oh, you had this planned all from the beginning. The the crash boat and you jumped on and, you know, like all this shit. Like, it, it's, it's basically like she outright says on some level that he planned this whole thing include down to the wasp, which uh, means, well, like, yeah. I don't know if he planned Mateo dying, but Mateo dying thrust him into the role of, okay, well, I can't depend on the captain to, you know, tow my line for me and tell these yeah. people what to do. So I'm going to have to, you know, rest control out of it. I thought that was pretty smart villain building. Honestly, as I much as I was like disgusted by his presence, that, apparently because I, I don't know. Did that happen at the end where she's like seducing him and then he gets clubbed in the back of the head? Um, I don't remember exactly. It's one of the, it's either that or later on when he's tied up um, and she's, oh, okay. he's tied up gotcha. on, on the deck of the boat and they're, they're, uh, they're run aground at that point. Gotcha. I think that's what okay. Happened. That's um, weird because yeah. he doesn't really need them because he's the snake hunter. He knows how right. to hunt the snakes. Like, but he's like, oh, he? we need a team to hunt snakes. Yeah, but like, like Owen Wilson, like this team of, of filmmakers, or the t- yeah. like you could you hired a boat captain, just hire a team of other poachers. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get a couple of people who know how to shoot guns. Like, like you know, whatever. You don't. You have to do. You cut your work in half easily. <laughs> Yeah, but you know he he used to be a priest, so maybe he's not a very good snake hunter either. Was he? You know, he failed. Know, he failed man. at one. He's in the middle of failing at the. Uh, other. I don't know, man. He does save some ass in the first. Like that's the thing is, like he make like I said, he makes himself indispensable, and that's irrefutable within the text of the movie. Like he saves Eric Stoltz's life for starters, but he does it by yeah. endangering his life. He endangers his life first, so it's it's just kind of yeah. crazy. I don't. Yeah. It's like a mixed bag where it's like either he's the most intensely conniving person in the world that made a huge oversight or he's just rolling with punches, which it, the text of the movie doesn't really support as much. I don't think. Yeah. So I don't know. There's a, there's a really dope scene where uh, early on an anaconda squeezes a panther and its eyeball pops out, which is pretty great. Yeah. It sure does. Yeah. <laughs> also, like the scene where it's swimming through the water and Owen Wilson is in its belly. Dude, dude, I thought that was hilarious. Oh my Classic. God. That's a perfect Classic. 90s beat. Oh like, my uh, God. That's a, like a great 90s um, monster movie moment to me. Because oh that's God. like, I don't know, anybody who's ever like come across a, a snake in their yard or whatever, that's just eating a rodent or whatever. It's like, Oh gross. It's got the thing in it. Or if any, like anybody who yeah. knows anything about snakes, they know that there's like this bulge. They actually had his whole Whoa. fucking face though. Like it Squeeze. was the, the cover of the frighteners in the <laughs> belly of this fucking anaconda. It was, I thought that was hilarious and not, not a bad idea for this dumb movie to do. Also, this fucking snake can eat a panther and then several human beings and still wants to pursue other human beings. Well, <laughs> so there's going to be laid out. <laughs> there's at least two of them, right? Because they kill one uh, before the climax even happens. J-Lo does. She oh, shoots okay. him in the head a couple yeah. times, which I think I think that was the Owen Wilson one, but I don't know. And there, there's like chances are there's more. I, I didn't really think too hard about that. I don't think it's that's like true. a, a jaws situation where it's the one true jaws and that's that, but who yeah. knows? I don't know. This movie might not matter. Give a shit. <laughs> yeah. The, I want to talk about the character of Warren Westridge a little bit. Cause he is like such a pompous prick. He's sort of like, oh, he's uh, the, 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 um, uh, oh, yeah. Robin Williams is dead. From yeah, Jumanji? yeah, exactly, yeah, okay. exactly. And he's he's the educated guy who's like on camera talking about this tribe. He's supposed to, you know, have the knowledge about it. Uh, but nature all, host, yeah. All the while on board, he's like blasting classical music and just like, you know, golfing <laughs> off the edge of the boat and just really not complaining about flights yeah, and yeah, just complaining about his the Bordeaux getting <laughs> smashed in his luggage. And, yeah, just being yeah. a bitch, just an overall bitch. <laughs> And when John Voight slaps him, eventually, I'm like, you know what? He probably had that coming. Yeah, that, that's but okay. I will say, I he actually, steps up. Yeah, I like that he steps up yeah. because, like, you've yeah, got these does. characters, like, like Owen Wilson, his and 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 his girlfriend, whose name I've forgotten. Their defining traits are his divine. And Owen Wilson like turns coats. She does basically nothing but react and like 
that's just all she's given to do, which is a shame. But then you get to um, this character, who's basically the last character you would expect to make it that far in the movie, and he does step up. He actually saves asses in the end of the at the end of the day at his own the expense of his own life. So I mean, I, I didn't at the end of the day, he was like set up as as like prime anaconda food fodder, but I think he. I think he earned his spot by doing that shit. It made it made him more of a less of a throwaway character to me. Yeah, and he did even he if it was like all lip service. You know, even if that wasn't necessary in the in the writing of the plot, I think it still was like a cool thing to make the the least likely survivor help the real survivors to the yeah. end. He had a decent end as well, where he's like climbing up the yeah. waterfall and then uh, leaps off of yeah. it, and the snake catches him midair yeah. and crushes him. Air, catches yeah. the pop fly. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> that solid. was probably one of my favorite kills. That was definitely my snake. favorite kill. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Short yeah. of the the end with John Voight, which is really out of out of gross out. Effects yeah, man. Than the, anything else. This movie has, it's like 50 50 with the effects. It's like they do some practical stuff, and the practical stuff, yeah. stuff that you see is pretty solid, but then whenever it cuts to CG, it's like immediately apparent that it has cut to oh, CG. It's so it's just bad. Not there, man. Um, some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate up here. Yeah. That's, that's what happens yeah. <laughs> in the 90s, though. You know, CG was like sort of. You know, a burgeoning thing. It was and proto. It was, like yeah, it wasn't. What there year yet. was this? Ninety eight, seven, ninety seven. So it was two years after Toy Story. Yeah. So they had some grasp of it, but it still didn't have any real like success. A year after Jurassic integrated. Park, though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, they, don't, they don't have a yeah. lot of real success with um with integrating it with human with human beings, basically, uh, at least not believably. And Jurassic Park m- is maybe the only example of that not being the case where it worked really well because they took the time to, um, to only do it in very specific instances. So I think that, and this movie clearly came, was birthed by Jurassic Park. We can all agree on that, right? Like pretty much the whole monster movie wave, right? In the 90s. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. That was the mega blockbuster of the nineties, pretty much. Yeah. So yeah, like I can't imagine Monster Hunch, yeah. I can't imagine Lake Placid gets made without the success of Jurassic Park. <laughs> so <laughs> oh, another man. classic. There were Dan, there were a shit ton of monster movies in the late nineties. There were and sci- like creature sci-fi. features, not yeah. Yeah, creature features, yeah, it really should be but yeah, sci fi was churning them out pretty pretty much what, uh, what year did Anaconda weekly. I mean Anaconda did uh Arachnophobia come out? That was early '90s, actually. That's but what that's, I thought too. That's a little. I think that was '92. I'd have to look it up. But I'm looking it up. 90. It is a little oh, different wow. though because that's only what? What is it? 1990. 1990 sorry. Damn. 1990. Okay, so even earlier. But yeah, that, that was like that's kind of an outlier. I want to say because it's there's not like a giant monster like uh, a dinosaur or a giant crocodile or a giant yeah. snake. Like it, it's just a swarming thing, which there was also like the movie slugs and shit like that with fucking, which I've mentioned before with Seth green. And it's like, they had little like swarming monster movies from the eighties on ants, I think was one, right. Or some, there was ants night of the animated ants or film. Oh. There's <laughs> multiple ants. With a Z. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, this is not the Woody Allen ants. Um, <laughs> That movie creeped me out. <laughs> well, there's a little uncanny valley there, sure. <laughs> True horror. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Um, fuck Jeffrey Katzenberg. But anyway, um, yeah, this is uh there was like there was no sh- like there was no end to there being monsters in movies, like the creature feature situations. It just was not as prevalent until Jurassic Park. And this movie, I think, is probably to my mind, all from what I can remember, it was the biggest sort of like follow up in that trend and like that was so quick to come after the, that success. Can you guys think of any others? I know Lake Placid was fairly big, but I would say this was bigger. Yeah. This was bigger this. than yeah, Lake Placid sure. for sure. This is yeah. a big deal. I can't think of any um, others that really like hit hit that level, but it's a, it's diminishing out. returns <laughs> in terms of like budget and general quality. <laughs> 
Yeah, I don't know. I nothing I'm off the top it of the dome. To see if there's any. Yeah, nothing. I wanted to see if there's anything. The else host. Kind of when did that come out? That was also not part of our culture. So it was, Tremors was no ninety. Lake Placid, uh, Deep Blue Sea, yeah. like sharks. Well, yeah, deep, there was yeah, a couple deep, sharks. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Deep Blue Sea is probably on the same level. There was as a movie, lot of disaster say, of movies around the time. Uh, there was like a couple of volcano movies. Dante's oh, Peak. Oh, yeah. Vol- or, volcano. That was, yeah, Volcano. That, volcano yeah. Dante's Peak. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, Cliffhanger and um, St. Helens or whatever that movie was called. Um, yeah, there was a lot deep of disaster rising? movies. I don't know what Deep, deep Rising. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. The, the Cube, that? The Abyss, like all Leviathan. these sort of like... Yeah, there's a lot of these, these like natural disaster movies too, but I don't know. Like, they're, they're kind of involved the same conversation but not yeah. exactly because it's still man versus nature and nature being grossly overpowered by comparison but there's something very different about a, a, a cognizant being I would say to where it feels very different it doesn't feel like they're too connected also I it feels but like it was kind a, trend. Of a different it feels like a different world now even seeing like even more back in the day there were things still like they had made that mummy where it's like still that mm old school idea of exploring like this foreign world like oh yeah. we're going this like very stereotypical like hyperbole of Egypt you know like oh yeah. we're going in the tombs and oh we're going to the Amazon forest there was still more of that going on in the, or it was almost like outbreak re- revitalized <laughs> yeah like oh we're going Congo, Congo. Yeah, Congo's yeah, on absolutely. this level too yeah. Congo got Congo, some Burger yeah. King toys you know that shit was yeah. legit <laughs> 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 so I feel like that's not a popular thing anymore, you know, like just well, no, because nine eleven happened. <laughs> and, yeah, well, uh, yeah, I'm just saying that like dampened the, all that shit. <laughs> the hyperboles of these like foreign unknown places like oh, yeah, I okay, see. I'm everybody sorry. travels now or you know, you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah, the world's more connected now. People are less yeah. like, I don't know. People are interested in what I still think they're interested in what, you know, what lies beneath and all that shit, but it's more psychologically driven, I would say overall and in, in yeah. horror now. But at the time it was dip, like, everybody was so the world was so rested and so like stable, at least in America. Mm. Um, it felt so stable that people were looking at the end of the world. They were looking at the day after tomorrow. They were looking at deep impact. They were looking at Armageddon, you know, <laughs> like they, they were looking at Jurassic park, things that would disrupt the balance versus things that were already there subverting the balance or keeping the balance fall in a false dichotomy of some kind. Yeah. Which is kind of where we're at now. <laughs> that's a really good point. Yeah. Now we're looking more inward as far as like filmmaking is concerned, specifically in the, yeah, we got get out and the like, hunt. Yeah. yeah there's, <laughs> well, yeah, there's, there's the plenty. Cult- no, you're a monster. The horror Put classic. The the hunt. Of you. There's plenty of infighting to uh, focus on and, and pull inspiration from nowadays, yeah. whereas the 90s definitely wasn't the case. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot more like general placidity about about the, the direction the world was uh, headed. Lake placidity. Lake placidity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know if placidity is a word, but I sure heard it was know. a much brighter time. Yeah. And yeah, then to like 9-11 happened and, you know, they took. The, the twin towers out of spider-man and that was it for for like disaster movies for a few years until they broached the topic again with fucking the world trade center and flight 93 and movies directly addressing it and then like war of the worlds which is like an allegory for that flawed though it may be yeah and i don't know like there's it was just a huge like obviously a huge culture shift for american cinema where we went from being like you know, what happens when the apple cart gets upset versus what happens now that the apple cart has been upset. Yeah. Yeah. And here we are. That's a history lesson from, from Shaboy Randy. Shaboy. That's right. Just teaching 13 year old stains <laughs> over here. It's, it's technically a drunk history <laughs> lesson. <laughs> <Randy>. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Time, time for some Malore, Randy. Oh, oh I, wish. Got I wish I never had to taste that ever again. And I hope <laughs> that comes true. I mean, you don't really have to. I mean, it's up to you, man. Yeah. Uh, I don't have it. Let's, uh, let's talk about that wall. So get, getting back to Anaconda here. Uh, John Voight's character is like, yo, I'm Paul Cerrone. I got a shortcut. Let's go down this little river, right? Cha. And uh, we'll get to the hospital much, much quicker. And they come to like a straight up dam in the middle of the river. And he's like, no worries. I got a bag full of dynamite. Full of dynamite. So I'll blow it up. 
What? Yeah, you never know. Never know what's going to happen. You know, you just carry never leave home with a around. Boy Scout carrying around stick upon stick upon stick of TNT cartoon style <laughs> yeah. Wiley Coyote Acme yeah. TNT. Yeah. So, uh, boy, no one Wilson uh, canoe out there and they, they string up all the dynamite and blow that shit up and it rains oh. snakes on the boat. Rain. I was just snakes. Yeah, it does. I was just thinking about that. I was like, what oh, no. the fucking snakes be the made of snakes? snakes. <laughs> they just blew that shit up. Those snakes would be fucking guts, dude. They're like they're like they treat the snakes like they're bees, like, oh no, you've attacked the hive. I must yeah. jump onto you. But no, <laughs> no, snakes don't typically do that. And then they just kind of kick them away, except for the one that wraps on the British guy's finger or whatever. Yeah. It's just like locks on. He's like, Please get this snake on me. It's like, bitch, if a it's snake so was just small. attached yeah. to my finger, I would just crush what it in my hand. hand. You could be <laughs> has like, another hand. Off. He has one other yeah. hand right here. <laughs> just go. <laughs> it's like, and a baby snake. Yeah. Yeah. Or just, it's like, jaws just like, aren't strong. Like, yeah. I mean, whether or not their jaws are strong, you have another hand and you are bigger than that snake. It's not the anaconda. It's a fucking <laughs> miniature snake rip it off or yeah. something they they do this thing in the movie that does it like i mean when you're when you're a kid anyway it built tension for me when you're an adult not so much but it, it like zooms into snake vision uh, so to speak where like <laughs> you're like zooming across the water and like sometimes underneath the water yeah, first, and you're like snake pov position. yeah it is mm-hmm. ridiculous and they do that when they're it like does that. out the dynamite and shit it yeah. does that a couple of times. It does it from the boar too, when they're out in yeah. the in the jungle yeah. and the boars running at them as yeah. a mislead, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the bad so. thing that happens when they blow this uh, the snake wall up is some branches knock all of their uh, their barrels of fuel into the river, so they're you know fucked. Basically, fucked. they're trying to find some some fuel on their route. You know, from there on out. If you're gonna blow some shit up maybe just back up far enough to where you're not going to be like having shit fall off your deck. Maybe don't store your fucking barrels of necessary fuel on the deck in a precarious pyramid formation that can easily roll off if untethered. I I don't know. Just spitball on I hear I'm no captain, (laughs) but I think that maybe those are good ideas to not do. Also. Yeah. Don't like send your cat dude. Fucking Mateo is everyone's bitch in this Mateo do this shit Dude. constantly it's like maybe if you're out in the mi- middle of fucking nowhere and Mateo's the only one who knows to get around maybe I'll send fucking Mateo to do yeah. the most dangerous shit all of the time yeah <laughs> no, but he's the alive. one that's paid it's a very yeah. like it's a very subservient role they put him in you're right in yeah. the zoom chat I was like everyone drink every time they say Mateo dude that shit is <laughs> constant <laughs> fucking constant <laughs> I just realized that you, okay, you had a you did not have the your your typical name on the Zoom chat. I didn't even realize you were there. I was like, oh, I guess Justin's not coming. Uh, no. <laughs> that's a straight chilling. No, it didn't. I'll, it, that's not important. I'm drunk. Oh, Let's okay. go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, they continue down the river. They come across a random boat, and uh, they. They want to investigate, see if it's got some some fuel on it, and that's when Mateo meets his end. But of course, uh, our boy Paul finds this like huge locker full of just guns, just more yeah, weapons. Gun locker, yeah. And it Dude. floats when they were pulling it across the river, yeah. and it's just floating. <laughs> it was. Dude, like, well, yeah, they it was didn't like just find that. That was thing. on. That was on John Voigt's former boat. That was what they were like showing. Like, he because they found found his clipping on the wall, a clipping of him that he Well, took. it was Danny Trejo's boat. Well, what it whoever it was, it was it was he was but part yeah, of his Yeah, they worked together, yeah. Yeah, okay, that was that okay. was the implication that Danny Trejo or whoever else like they were involved together and because they have his like newspaper clipping about John Voight on the wall that he yeah. manages to hide for a while. That's where so, we see that Mateo's in on it too. So it's like Trejo, right. Voight and Mateo all in that clipping or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. We just got to get these random folks, uh, you know, Jennifer Lopez. We can't yeah, catch the snake did. without J-Lo. Can't do it. I'm still, I'm still the can't do it. <laughs> He's still Jennifer he, the Now he does like, okay, if he needs a three-man crew, um, 
He does. So he manipulates Owen Wilson with like the ploy of money. And then he, wow. he does get uh, like the British guy to drive the boat. So, okay. Like there's your, there's your squad. And like, he just kind of intimidates like ice cube, like shut the fuck up or I'll kill you. Cause he doesn't try to like recruit him or anything. And then the women are there. So, I mean, I guess if he needs three, that, I mean, that's a I, squad. Speaking just of hire cube, a third love- dude. Just hire a third. Yeah. Just hire, yeah. yeah. Just hire, <laughs> yeah. You know, find another dude with a boat and find a couple more mercenaries. Well, he could have just hired Mateo. And, I don't know why. Maybe. Yeah. Well, he did. Mateo like, gives him the stink eye like the whole fucking time, though. <laughs> I guess he's there begrudgingly, but like, oh, I, like I would be pissed too. It's like, well, I mean, you hired me to subvert this other person that's hired me. I guess he's doubling his profits and maybe that's what his, his game is. But just let if you want to work for the mercenary let let the mercenary pay you don't work with these people who don't even know that they're hunting anything that seems like a mistake when you're hunting an extremely dangerous prey well also maybe it's a good way for him to keep all the profits for himself once they've helped him they're easy to dispose of i guess i mean that's i feel like that's pretty i don't know it, I don't know that there's the enough 90s. to support that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the thing is like, I'm, I'm, I'm asking questions that this movie never intended people to ask. Yeah. <laughs> so nobody was ever supposed to analyze this until no, Bob picked no. it for the poll pick and said, you know, I, I really kind of hope Anaconda wins. <laughs> <laughs> Some people thought that that's for sure. Uh-huh. <laughs> Um, so yeah, after that scene where Mateo gets crushed by the snake, um, they try and catch it. It doesn't work. Um, some more people get picked off. They eventually like find this, uh, this like is silo place? building thing on so, the water. Okay. Can I, I ask a question? Yes. Why is there a, uh, so let's just call it for the sake of giving it a name, an oil rig. <laughs> Why is there an oil rig? behind an ancient wall that has to be exploded with sticks of Acme dynamite. <laughs> that's not a very good question. That is, that's, that's, How did you get to work as an oil rigman? rigman. <laughs> Mr. Rigman. How did My you name's get oil rigman and I have to get to work <laughs> and I have to climb over an ancient wall. Every day. Wall. Covered, made out of snakes. <laughs> <laughs> That is, uh, that's a good question, Randy. That is not something I considered, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> also, too, because they come up on this spot and they're like, oh, the legends are real, like with the waterfall and shit. And it's yeah. by that. <laughs> oh, speaking of that fucking waterfall, this is something that was brought to my attention by uh, the much superior podcast. How did this get made when they covered this movie? I haven't listened Whoa, to it in a right. while, but one of the only things I remember about their conversation about that is so funny because I caught it this time as an adult, but I never noticed it as a kid. There's, they show them arriving at the waterfall and then getting run aground in front of it. And it's like, a, it's a normal shot. They establish yeah. it. And then like when they finally get loose, which is after a big action scene, they just show the reverse of that shot and the water <laughs> is falling upwards. That's right. You caught it out <laughs> in this, in the zoom. Oh, I was in the zoom under Justin. That's why right. you didn't think it was Justin. Me. <laughs> and then a name that was not your last name. So I was, I was like, I'm not sure who this is, but great. Uh, <laughs> that's happened to Bob before porn bot. Yeah. Just another porn bot. Yeah. Porn, porn, porn bot, bot Justin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah, this, yeah, this so sort Randy of was like, like water does not flow backwards. <laughs> it certainly doesn't fly upwards into the sky. <laughs> That's just not. pretty funny. This uh, this sort of final sequence here. Uh, Paul comes back, old Cerrone, and he ties up J Lo and Ice Cube and dumps a bunch of like lamb's blood on them and just sets them out for bait for the anaconda. The anaconda comes up and they somehow magically get out of their ropes and they're fine. But uh, it swallows John Voight whole. And probably one of my favorite parts of the movie is we get an inside of the snake shot as it's like swallowing John Voight. You see, you see the interior of the snake. I did love that shot. It's insane. And it's practical. It's, it's not, totally insane. It's not CG. So it yeah, looks okay, I guess. It looked like it reminded me very much of the uh, the dentist and uh, little shop of horrors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but not quite as as charming, of course. But it like I was like, yes, I'm on board for this 100. percent This is exactly what I want out of this movie. But um, yeah, yeah, I don't know, man. Fucking Voight. 
Voight carries this movie and destroys this movie all, <laughs> the, all at the same time. He, I don't. He was the definitely the most entertaining part, and it, it's like he's not doing a good job. But like the one liners that everyone else has, like I the one liners from Ice Cube are fucking terrible. They are wretched. Terrible. He's supposed and to be the everyman. Him. He's like, I don't remember his lines actually, but like it's, it's like. What they're bad. There are snakes that big. <laughs> like he does a yell. They was like, I'll kill. Like John Boy threatens him at one point. He's like, I'll just kill you right now. Or whatever. And he's like, Yeah, I like to see. You try. And he says something like, Yo, mama, or something. And I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, this, <laughs> it's like, Oh yeah. my God. It's so. That's, even in the 90s, bad. people were like, like uh, That's the easiest yeah. joke to make. You just say, Yo, mama, after anything. Uh, like, that's not. That's a, that's a, that's a quantifiable cliche even in would, the 90s i would say john boy is the most entertaining and then the british guy is like number two as far as like in, when they're on screen and just their performances everybody yeah. else is pretty bad even though Owen Wilson it. is like vanilla best, before so. before we get into the rating which is kind of like where we're heading right now i do want to mention john voight gets regurgitated and then winks at jayla yes he does yes that he has does. to be commented upon Wow, <laughs> dude, he gets regurgitated and he's covered in like this sea foam green yeah. mucus, which I don't think is, I don't think that's a scientifically accurate, but uh, you know, I'm no Paul Sarone, so I don't know. <laughs> um, but he gets regurgitated and he's just got the one eye left and he winks at her and I'm like, are they really going to have the villain still yeah. survive after that? Because they've already done the mislead death at least once. And they Maybe do, twice. They set this up. So one thing we didn't mention, the movie actually opens up with just some text on the screen and it's talking about how terrifying the anaconda is. And apparently the anaconda just loves to kill, that it will swallow its prey and spit it up just so it has the chance to swallow it again because it likes to kill that much. So that's kind of what we're seeing here. Um, and, and the God man damn. winks. He's half digested and winks. Uh Bold choice. I love it. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Oh my god, this movie's ridiculous. Um, here's here's one of um one of uh Ice Cube's one liners. It's uh um man, that's it, man. I'm getting the hell back to LA. <laughs> and they reference it again. That is oh, he's like, oh, I want to get back to rounds. Traffic. My, he yeah. even says my cellular phone. My cellular yeah. phone. Jesus my cellular telephone Christ. unit. <laughs> unit. The um, interwebs. That's, yeah. I love how she's scrolling through. I can't an wait old, to get back to that dancing baby. <laughs> she's scrolling through an old <laughs> website, and I was yeah. just like, Jesus Christ! I can't wait to get back to Netscape Jesus and that dancing Christ. baby. <laughs> Geo <laughs> cities, bring it on. Um, Ally McBeal, talk to me. Pretty much the end of the movie. <laughs> then we got you know J Lo and Ice Cube. They make it out alive, and they they finally get the uh, footage of the tribe. Um, that's pretty much it. I don't, anything else you guys want to touch on before we rate Anaconda? No, <laughs> <laughs> I could spin for hours, but no, it's fine. True that. All right, let's go ahead and rate this thing out of five. Randy, how do you feel about Anaconda? Um, like I said, this is a conflicting movie for me because I, this is like, I can think of three movies that I would consider like my introduction to horror. It's this, it's Leprechaun and it's Puppet Master One. And like the, by most accounts, those movies are at best schlocky, dumb things like, and this movie is no exception to that. But at the time, all three of those movies, I was proud to have seen. I was like, I thought that I was like watching things that were terrifying to adults. And I was proud for having watched something that would have scared an adult. And I think there's some value to that. I think that like, there's a reason that movies like truth or dare exist. There's a reason that movies like, uh, I don't know, unfriended exists and shit like that, that are PG 13 horror or PG horror. Even I think there's a reason that like shit like return to Oz exists. <laughs> like, I don't know if they meant that to be proto horror or child horror, but it definitely was. <laughs> But all that said, this movie is really fucking dumb. I'm going to illustrate that by reading some of the quotes off of the IMDb quotes page. And I'm going to do my best to do a John Voight doing bad <laughs> Portuguese accent. So Paul Cerrone, don't just say John Voight. John Voight sees Anaconda and says, Buenos noches, beautiful. <laughs> he also says, this river can kill you in a thousand ways. <laughs> 
And then he holds up some white dust and says, see this human bones. That's how it comes out. Ashes to ashes. Fucking snakes don't eat people, says Terry. And Paul and John Voigt says, oh, they don't. And points to the scar on his neck. And this, this one is like, this is just like perfect writing. Perfect writing. Gary Owen Wilson, you might wow, you might recognize. He says, "There's something going on down there." And Paul says, or, and and John Waite says, "That's right." And Owen Wilson says, "No, I really mean it." <laughs> and John Waite says, "I really mean it too." <laughs> End. That's End the, yeah, that's scene. the conversation. End scene. Yeah, nothing happens. I really no. mean it too. Okay. <laughs> we, we'd have to fill this. We, we like. We need double confirmation that there's something down there, and we need it twice. That's four confirmations that there's something. You don't even have to say that at all if you're a good filmmaker. Uh, it's a bad movie, but it's also so close to my heart that I can't completely outright blast it and we didn't even talk about j-lo j-lo doesn't like have a character really besides being capable and just the survivalist of the group um but i enjoyed watching that and this was my introduction to her i didn't really know her music even at the time because i was like nine i wasn't really paying attention to music i don't know culturally and personally i really like this movie but in every other way it doesn't do very well i would say that its practical effects are good but its cgi is bad its acting is atrocious it plays uh waterfalls in reverse i mean there's not a whole lot that you can say uh, in terms of craft that will save this movie to me. So all that considered, I'm going to give it a two. Two out of five from Randy juice. How do you feel? Yeah, I didn't really have any kind of special goggles going on watching this movie. I had seen it before, but I like, I didn't feel a whole lot for it. And so when it was bad, it's just like, man, I don't remember it being this bad, but it's bad. Um, the, it, the snake, it looks ridiculous. Now the one liners are terrible. Uh, I will say like, John Boy does a bad job, but he's like at least entertaining in a movie that's mm-hmm. just filled with a bunch of villain vanilla nobodies that's doing true. nothing else. So um And he's actually like written like he's the only character that's written with any level of smarts, like where Yeah. Which is debatable, but I think that there is enough to go on to where I was fooled by a couple of things he did. And also like it gave him interesting motivations that you wouldn't necessarily expect out of a movie this dumb. Yeah. Yeah. At least Sorry, he had continue. like he was smart and motivated and you had your time, Randy. No, yes, just speaking. please continue. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I just there wasn't even at the end of it all. There wasn't even a whole lot of like kills where I was like, oh, man, that's going to stick out in my mind later down the road or anything like that. That Owen Wilson belly bounce re- ridiculous um i it just looks bad and that's rough for a creature feature where they like don't try to hide the snake a whole lot once it comes out um i got it i'll give this one a 1.5 1. 1.5 5 from juice all right bob what's up man what do you think of Anaconda, the movie you picked for the poll pig? <laughs> Does your Anaconda want some? I like do how you have Rob? buns. Um, how you're framing this. Uh, <laughs> right. I like this movie a good bit more than y'all do, I think. It's cheesy. Um, it's very much of the 90s. Uh, but as far as its entertainment value, I think it really brings a lot to the table. Like John Voight may not be playing a like believable character. It may be a little bit goofy, but he's insanely entertaining. Um, and racist. I mean, <laughs> maybe so. Um, I don't know. I, I could say that for pretty much all the characters. It, Outside of John Voight, pretty much everybody else in this movie is really just like a caricature. They're they're not like fully developed in any way, but they serve their purpose. And most of them are just sort of red shirts, and uh, that's fine. You know, I don't mind that when it comes to a goofy, uh, self aware creature feature like this. There's a couple decent kills. Um, it definitely suffers from bad CGI, which is just sort of 
product of the time. Um, but a lot of the practical stuff is pretty solid and I think it holds up pretty well. Um, and I just like love seeing JLo and ice cube starring in a movie because that could not happen in any other year than like 1997. It's just, (laughs) it's ridiculous. Um, it's a fun adventure movie. I think, uh, you know, you strap in, you go along for the ride with them. I don't, I don't know, man. You I, strap I, on I think that's and fair. you just and go honestly, to town. I enjoyed it. Hmm? Honestly, like if I put were to parallel this to any movie today, I would say Crawl, right? Except it's just yeah. not, it's yeah. an entirely different tone because that's what the audiences of today want is not not the same level of schlock or not the same level of, um, not even schlock, it's, it's just not the same level of um, pandering to cultural norm you know <laughs> sure yeah and there's there's also like a, a noticeable lack of like mono culture nowadays we're like you know yeah. I, I mean if 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 you were going to do something similar today you'd make crawl with like lady gaga starring or exactly some, some yeah you'd, you'd like have that. you'd have selma selma or selma selena gomez <laughs> and uh i don't know dan Aykroyd as her dad or some yeah, shit. yeah yeah but um not barry pepper for whatever reason but, but yeah, they definitely have some similarities for sure. And I don't know. I'm just, I enjoy, I enjoy the adventure of it and uh, the fact that it really doesn't take itself too seriously. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to give it a three out of five. Um, hey, Bob. Yo. Break out that uh, ink eraser because you bumped me up to a 2.5. Oh, my Lord. Now I got an ink, Randy. I got to get yeah. my calculator. So back is the out. scribble that will cover it up. <laughs> Fucking talk oh, I'm about so sorry. While I Rob fix likes it so, neat. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, Rob. Rob. Yes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you. All right, our aggregate is now going to be a 2.3, repeating, of course, because Randy changed his score as he tends to do. Uh, all right. <laughs> I don't know. Pick Why me don't first, you then? just stop? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you pick me first Randy every lots. time. <laughs> You Give me a second to hear the arguments. I'm a, I'm a reasonable guy. I can be reasoned with, but I can't do it early. Randy's easy to sway, Jeez. easy to manipulate. You, no, oh, thanks, <laughs> thanks, Josh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fucking politicking stains over here. Get the fuck. And out nobody of here. knows more. About, nobody knows more about manipulating the guy offering free goodies to those who pick his favorite right. movie. <laughs> I'm just saying, I got the goods. Yeah. Might as well. Well, throw it out you had to oh, double I'll check in the middle if goods this accurately described. To make the sure you have the goods does not describe. Oh. Let the people decide what they right. want. Oh, will right. we or right. will you choose to? <laughs> all right, all right, if all right. You decide. We got shit to do. We're going way off, way off the tracks. <laughs> Man, all right. It's time to jump over to our Rotten Tomatoes segment. See what the critics and users think about Anaconda. Certified fresh to death. All right. So this segment is called the Rotten Tomatoes segment. For those new to the cast, what we do is I'm going to ask these two gentlemen what their uh, best guess is from zero to 100 percent on the percentage of positive reviews on RottenTomatoes.com. We're going to start with the critics and then move on to the users. As long as everybody's got that, we're good. All right. So let's start with our uh, critic score. Um, There are 51 of those, so not a whole great number of them. Um, Juice, we'll start with you. Justin, what do you, wait, wait, what's your guess between 100, 0 to 100 for this movie? Man, I feel like people kind of dig on this movie more than they should. Um, but it's definitely got its cap. Um, I actually, this is a legit guess, but it's been a while. I'll give it the old 69. Whoa. Yeah. 69, dudes! The comedy number is in play. Bob, yeah, straight what are you going to say? What are you going to do against the the comedy number, huh? I'm going to wager that it is lower than 69. So I'm just, I'll take a 65, please. 65. Not that much lower. Mm. All right. And uh, Bob, you are going to take it, but nobody will be will be accurate by saying you are close. Um, this movie has 39% on the top. Wow. Time okay. Whoa. That was significant. 39%. Um, wow. And okay. here's, Here's what the critics consensus has to say. Anaconda's pulpy pleasures are constricted by its own absurdity. 
but creature feature fans may enjoy its brazen silliness. I think that seems okay. pretty on the money. At least it describes the varying opinions of us, this group. Yeah. Um, with the exception of not, not accounting for our nineties upbringing, I guess. Um, all right. So, uh, Rob, why don't you start us off this time? And we're going to go to the audience score and the audience, the user ratings on this rank in 422,502. So significantly. Holy more. Holy shit. Holy shit. All Damn. right, Bob. So start us off. That is a lot. That's a ton. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the sixty. What I gave it. Sixty. Okay. All right. Juice. How about you? Mm, so many people. I'm gonna go lower. I'm gonna say fifty. 50. Okay. So same story as last time, but reverse it. Justin, you are winning, but you have not come <laughs> anywhere close to correct. This audience score is 24 percent holy shit lower than the critics lower than the critics (laughs) i took this movie to be a cult classic apparently it it is not i'm i'm men of the people this this week uh yeah yeah yeah, (laughs) you you are are this you are you are men i i am men of the people me and soju you know multiple wieners (laughs) um so here's going to be, I'm going to read as I do. So uh, big it counts as two, huh, Randy? Uh, no, just a couple minuscule. <laughs> they they call you slim soju for a reason. Just a couple, <laughs> just a couple minnow swimming urethras is all. Um, I see. Uh, I'm gonna, as I do, I'm going to read some negative reviews because of course they are funnier. Um, <laughs> and there are more plentiful by far. Um, a silly and plotting Jaws ripoff about a 40-foot man-eating snake on the prowl in the Brazilian rainforest. Well, that wasn't funny at all. I'm going to try again. I'm going to pull from the <laughs> You motherfucker. <laughs> um, let's see. One never questions the realism of remarkable animatronic and computer-generated effects, but it's hard to credit a snake that screams. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Anaconda is about a snake that eats everybody. That about says it all. All right. Ooh, there's yeah. so much more to riff on this. There is. Yeah. I can't believe they're not being more funny about this. It's just entertain me. It's about Ross, a snake. I mean, if, critic. It's about if, a snake that eats ass. I don't personally I don't see any point in writing a negative review unless you're gonna be hilarious about it. But you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. Well, whatever. That's it. Rotten tomatoes. Those tomatoes are rotten as fuck. Sweet deal. Uh, let's jump over to our trivia segment. It's totally time for trivia. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. All right. Let's so you explain it all. No, um, no. So, <laughs> so they're talking about the catfish in this um, film. And it swims up your penis. And apparently it's also known as the vampire fish, um, Mm. which was attributed with a particular behavior of swimming into the human body through the urethra or the vagina in women. So urethra in men, vagina in women, um, where it lodges itself with its spines. This is not as common an occurrence as the film implies. Only one such incident is known to have happened to a man where a small catfish traveled into the urethra while he was urinating in the river. This account has been uh, confirmed by Jeremy Wade in River Monsters Amazon Flesh Eaters. So, it is very bizarre indeed. I don't know why they would then mention that it swims into a man's urethra and then a woman's vagina. If it's only happened one time and it happened to a man. Oh, a cause they just assume it goes both ways. Okay. Well, you gotta so, be equal. It, it has happened, but it's not common. Yeah. Well, that, that, that tracks with what this movie is. And also that actually tracks with Eric Stoltz's character, who is if nothing like nothing, if not a huge brag, like yeah, he brags true. about everything. So if he's just trying to impress people with his knowledge, then I could buy that. He's yeah. trying to impress people with his massive urethra. <laughs> I've got a urethra you could drive trucks through. 
<laughs> God damn, that's not good. Uh, <laughs> d- during the filming of one scene, the controls for the animatronic anaconda shorted out, causing it to completely lose control. Damn. Some of the footage is included in the movie. <laughs> so they're just like, oh, fuck, that's good enough. <laughs> God damn. Yeah. I just like. I just imagine a giant like robotic snake just doing this whole like fucking country bear jamboree dance. <laughs> <laughs> it's out of control. Playing the banjo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Blood on the saddle. The whole spiel. It's playing the banjo. <laughs> Hit the <laughs> <dick. laughs> If anybody's gonna want to kill it for playing banjo, it's John Voight. But <laughs> true. The, this the CGI for the anacondas cost one hundred thousand dollars per second <laughs> God, damn and it, they did is, not they supplied a lot of that shit too shit. and it was not good so it was that's unfortunate <laughs> did not hold up oh my god i can't imagine though damn i cannot imagine doing computer graphics back in the 90s that shit had to be the slowest goddamn oh my God. shit you dude rendering ever that shit do. yeah rendering a whole rendering a second of footage back in the day and even now if you're too complex is like at least a day's worth of rendering holy shit oh my god and that's like nowadays they do like multiple passes and it's yeah. it's more efficient but it's still like insane to, like the amount of detail that has to go into each frame is so nuts um, this film is listed among the top 100 most enjoyable bad movies ever made in Golden Raspberry Award founder John Wilson's book, The Official Razzie Movie Guide. Oof, that was not <laughs> well. <laughs> so John Wilson has a book called The Official Razzie Movie Guide, and it is amongst the top 100, I guess. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that one. Um, <laughs> um, Sorry, I am currently reading. reading. These. Oh man, this is the worst part of doing <laughs> trivia. Welcome. Ba, 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 ba. Play the song. <laughs> Justin explains it all on Play his own time. The song, <laughs> right? Justin prepares. Obviously, he does. Justin yeah, prepares dude. it all. It was an early morning. I was a little. <laughs> I was a little late this morning. Um, Today was a good day. Heard that. <laughs> there you go. Heard Thank that. you. Let's just let's just move on. <laughs> all right. <laughs> You know what time it is. <laughs> no. What time is it? What it's time? time to go hunting. Cooter of the week. Oh, this is going to be a long convo, I think. Cooter of the week. Juice. Right. Tell me what a cooter is. Cooter. Straight chilling exclusive. Exclusive. His character type. Type. <laughs> you have to hit three of these five points to three. be considered a cooter. Cooter. We are on the hunt. Hunting. For a Cooter of the Week, who's top Cooter contender? The five points are sexual deviancy. Sexual deviancy. Manipulation. Manipulation. Smug arrogance. Smug arrogance. Overall look and attire. Overall look and attire. And being Bob. No, overall patheticness. Whoa. (laughs) Fuck (laughs) yourself. Fire. All right. Watching television. No. Um, so who I'll are give the top? you guys a bonus episode <laughs> if you vote for me. I'll give you $5 <laughs> if you vote for my favorite movie. <laughs> you just don't want to vote because you haven't seen it, guys. If you saw it, you would think this is the best goddamn I've movie seen it, you ever way. have <laughs> seen. I, have I haven't seen that. Ringu, but uh, you know you know what's interesting about Ringu is uh, it, it's kicked off a whole uh, horror movement and is an international success with multiple sequels yeah, and a huge franchise. You guys true, are you just know, sloppy, true. Randy, sloppy bitches. Randy's just going <laughs> ham. All of that is true. I think Ringu is a little bit overrated, I'll be honest. But maybe we'll talk about it later. Destroy maybe we won't talk about it later. I don't know. Okay, uh, we're talking about cooters. We're going hunting. Honestly, it seems pretty obvious that John Voight is the fucking cooter in this movie. John Voight right? is like, he's so. number one on my list, but there are yeah. several people that I think we got to cover. Okay. So let's cover John Voight first. All he right. definitely has manipulation out the wazoo. Yeah. I think that's his strongest trait. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. 
So manipulation is very high. He concocts this crazy wild plan, kills a bunch of people. Smug arrogance. Oh, he uh, he's very smug. He thinks he does, like he does not best. like to be told uh, yeah. anything. That he's he he likes to be the smartest guy in the room by far. Yeah. He hates that Eric Stoltz can I know this and shit. river. And I know this river very well. Very well. Very well. Very well. Very well. Very well. My wife is an anaconda. <laughs> the river's my wife. <laughs> um, we just did my wife jokes. This is going yeah. badly. <laughs> it's going really badly. We do that every now and then. We just devolve into mm. like the most obvious <laughs> joke of all jokes. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then let's see. Uh, smug arrogance, manipulation are high. Um, so you would think that the sexual deviancy would be high, but he never actually. No, 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 no. no. I'm going to stop you right there. Oh, no, no. He, this dude, well. he gets seduced by Jennifer, <laughs> Jennifer Lopez. Yeah. And Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer Lopez yeah. then gets caught midstream uh-huh. and before taking That's care true. of business and knocking out. Um, Whoever it was, Ice Cube, I believe, attacked uh, and tried to attack him yeah. from behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes back in for another big old tonguey smooch, and he is seven thousand years older than her. I'm guessing <laughs> um, he's mummy status compared to her. So I think that's pretty sexually deviant. That's true. Opinion. I was thinking, like, hey, you know, at first he thought it was consensual because she was manipulating him, but well, yeah, then you, you are right. That. Once he finds out, once then he, he plants finds out, you're one right. Just he goes to fuck back. her up. Yeah. Like, the just way, to be a dick. There's one scene where he is just far far before that where he was just like staring her down and it is Dude, yeah. really gross is he? Okay, you could know. argue that that is more Perfect. about his his like apparently poorly concealed intentions where he's giving his grimace face it's just like well <laughs> if yeah. anybody gave me like shot that look at me like even if i like either he wants to fuck me against my will or he's trying to pull one over on me like that is the least trustworthy face i have he's, ever seen he's just like a slightly removed from hannibal lecter like sucking his teeth at j-lo like oh yeah yeah it's it's he's pretty just gross stare down it's it's that when people say the male gaze are talking about this movie and john <laughs> Boyce, so, that's more than a gaze my boy yeah <laughs> holy shit the male raping gaze that's john void all over um <laughs> The attire, attire, a, uh, attire. Okay. Oh, sorry, I was he's just trying to look in attire. You know, he's, I think he's dressed fairly appropriately. That face, that if not ponytail, is a little fucking dumb. <laughs> and yeah, the way he, the, the way, way he, he contorts looks? his face, <laughs> like that's a choice. <laughs> Yeah, it's not an accident. It's hard to do. John John Voight <laughs> made your... a choice, and he's a villain. So I don't I don't begrudge him as an actor for making the choice to be like like make dumb face like make really gross faces yeah. or whatever. But he does it so much that it's like <laughs> disgusting. Yeah, and pathetic. pathetic. Is he I would pathetic? Say no. I would say no. Like Pretty he's capable. He's very capable. He's shown yeah. himself to be incredibly capable at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. And even when shit goes sideways for him, he always like comes back because he's the villain that always comes back in this movie. Yeah. So, uh, three strong up. points, yeah. uh, and then like a soft, a soft look and then no real, but the best strong. I would strong. say, yeah, yeah, three and a half at lowest, but certainly three. Yeah, strong. So let's talk about Eric Stoltz because I got a cooter vibe from him f- fresh okay. out of the gate. Well, I don't know if we have enough information about him, and I don't know that he's going to end up being a cooter, but I really feel like it needs to be commented on be- that his smug arrogance at the beginning mm, and pretty much yeah. throughout his, anytime he's talking, he gives off this insane smug arrogance that is impossible to ignore. <laughs> I think that's his biggest thing, though, because he doesn't try to manipulate anybody. He doesn't. He's not a big sexual deviant. He's in a relationship. No. Yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't get a. At first, I thought, was, this, at first I thought he was hitting on J Lo, but it was again a situation where they had a history, and I didn't realize that. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and then he's not. I mean, he's capable too. He like volunteers yeah. to go into the river, cut the rope. He's not pathetic. Almost um, so dies. He's not pathetic. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, and then still steps up even after yeah. he's like yeah. injured after getting, and like after, still kind of you, saves. True. If you're able to step up after getting a tracheotomy, like an impromptu tracheotomy with a big ballpoint pen, yeah, then Jesus. that's pretty capable. Yeah. So, really just smug arrogance. So, not yeah. cooter status. But it's so high that it really threw me. <laughs> yeah. And like, I would have gone for sexual deviancy if they hadn't established that they had him and Jennifer Lopez had a thing previously. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, uh, Owen Wilson a little bit just just path- I think it's pathetic how pathetic. quickly he's willing to he throw flips. out. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. flips so quickly. Yeah. That is pretty it's pretty pathetic. Really a shame. Wow, he's, he's not manipulative. He's dressed normally. He doesn't seem super egotistical. Really, no. I nah. I think it could be argued that he just makes a really boneheaded decision. But yeah. to me, it strikes as 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 arrogantly uh, selfish <laughs> yeah. decision. So yeah. maybe a little smugness too, but it's, yeah. it's well concealed by his patheticness. <laughs> what do y'all think about this? Yeah, anaconda? The snake. You want to break snake? on the snake? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Snake. man. The snake's just uh, he's doing a what smug, monster arrogant do. for sure. He's just yeah. a cocky son of a bitch. Well, I mean, the <laughs> snake just keeps sexual coming. deviant. Just keeps coming. I mean, they do try and catch it, and then they, they fail. But after that, the, the fucking thing just keeps well, coming if, at them. If we trust the the text at the beginning, they're kind of assholes because they just spit up their food just to fuck with it and That's eat true. it again. Which happens. That's kind of some oh, yeah. smug yeah. arrogance. It's okay. true. Okay, yeah. fine. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a point. And also, yeah. the snake, uh, even at the very end of the movie, after like the silo blows up and the snake is completely on fire, it is still chomping at J-Lo midair as it falls <laughs> into the water. Like You got to be pretty yeah. fucking confident to still be trying yeah. to get your food when you're on fire. You might arrogance. also have to be an animal. <laughs> the animal's intelligence. I, I mean, I does know. it manipulate them into a trap at all? I don't think so, man. Like, mm. it, that, that, that's one thing this movie does is it doesn't ascribe human thought yeah. to this snake and this monster. And I appreciate that because there's a lot of creature features where it's like like yeah. Jaws the Revenge where it's like oh it knows <laughs> Chief Brody's family and it's gonna <laughs> hunt them down in their new home in Florida or whatever well we can definitely give it a tire because when it's half CG it looks like dog shit oh well, yeah that's bad. yeah that's I'll give true. you that sure so um, two so yeah Log one and a half I'd say tire I'm gonna um, like it seems like Voight is is yeah. what we expected him to yeah. be in this it's it, this man is a predator more so than any snake in this movie by far. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. There's a great line that JLo has, and I'm trying to remember exactly how it goes, but she said something like, see, you're not the only one who can catch a snake. And at first I was like, what the fuck is she talking about? And then I was like, oh, that's Metaphor. so clever. Yeah. I'm Whoa. so, oh, that's so clever. Cause Whoa. he's a snake. <laughs> Run from the snake. Run from the snake. Whoa, did you, I thought you just turned into fucking... Uh, disturbed or some shit. <laughs> Ooh, wow. Slipknot ass motherfucker. All right. So we we some hunted slip them. Slipknot ass motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate uphill. <laughs> Slipknot will make you fat. Oh, <laughs> R.I.P. Yeah. Um, Pouring out for Wesley Willis. All right, Wesley Willis. <laughs> we caught him, John Voight. Now it's time to let our hair we down. Him. It's the social hour. We got him talking about what we've been watching this week <sighs> hey gang what you been watching hey gang what you been watching randy. hey randy what you been watching my guy hey man First that's my line. line you took well, so long <laughs> <laughs> i like I had time middle, to yawn and everything I was in the middle of saying it and then you cut me off <laughs> All right, Randy, what you so been watching? So what have I been watching? So as is evidenced by some of the points I made today, I want to make sure and give due credit. I watched a lot of um, Lindsay Ellis videos on YouTube recently, some of which dealt with disaster movies in the 90s, which gave me several of the talking points. Credit due, but also very, very, very well-researched YouTube videos about popular culture and media and specifically movies usually, um, occasionally musical theater and shit like that. She's great. If you don't already watch her shit, then you should. It's very, very smart stuff and very, very entertaining as well. Um, I've been playing Bioshock Infinite. Uh, comments to be withheld until uh, I can finish and we can I can discuss with Justin whether or not we're going to do that bonus episode. Um, yeah, I also, wait, what, how far are you, Randy? 
Let's see. Um, how, I, how much have you been playing? Uh, I was in the Hall of Heroes today. I don't know if okay. that means anything yeah. to you. Okay. You took on that guy. Have you taken on that guy yet? I took on a guy. Yeah, I took on okay. a guy. You take him. <laughs> take him. I took him. Get him. You know, I, I took him yeah, head on. You know, uh, take him all. Take him to the limit. Maybe a third. Maybe a third, but then you got the DLC. Wow, really? I didn't know I was that far along. Um, it seemed like a much bigger game. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so I've been doing that. Uh, I also went on a little bit of a Scientology bender by watching Going Clear oh. again. And then I also watched a movie called My Scientology Movie, which is um, a BBC-produced documentary on the subject, which is a little bit more, or I don't know, a little bit less uh, heavy or a little bit more jokey. Because it involves a um, reporter, Justin, I want to say it's Justin Thoreau, but that's an actor. I may have the wrong name. Anyway, this guy, he's basically trying to recreate the um, current uh, leader of, of Scientology's like addresses and like recreate events that supposedly happen behind closed doors. So he hires actors. It's kind of like the casting John Benet thing about John Benet Ramsey that mm. I never saw, but I've been told that it's pretty similar to that. But um it's actually pretty interesting because it also like dives pretty deep on one character who is like a leading character against like Scientology movement who used to be like the enforcer for the Scientology, like, like the guy, the number two guy that's the get shit done guy who did all sorts of horrible things to people and who has since like become their biggest, most vocal critic writing books, exposés, all sorts of shit. Mm -hmm. But they also try not to let him off the hook either for his own involvement. And I think that part is really interesting. Um, Going clear is a better overall survey of, of the story. I would say overall survey of, of the topic, but that Scientology movie starts out a little silly um, seeming, but it has some pretty interesting stuff going on. And also, weirdly, somebody that I grew up with makes an appearance in that movie, um, which that is weird. I'm gonna tell. I'll tell you guys about that later because I don't know how. I don't know. I don't know if I should be bringing up names or not. I'll, I'll tell you. Old Jake, huh? If this car does exactly no, who I thought. It's not that. <laughs> way. It's not okay. that. No, and it's also not. It's not also not in a negative light at all. Like it's it's very. He he. This is a person that I know that became an actor and and uh, tried to get the role that I was discussing. He was. Oh, know why we think of jake and randy like so like intertwine i mean we used to live together live yeah. together we lived together <laughs> we in a little cottage <laughs> um no we, we he was my neighbor but anyway it doesn't matter that's not important to anybody but us so <laughs> let's move on um yeah and then let's see i started i'll be gone in the dark the new hbo series centered around the golden state killer and um cool um Michelle McNamara's work on that. And like, it's almost more about at least so far, Michelle McNamara than the Golden State Killer, which is really interesting. Like, I don't know if you guys know much about her. She was married to Patton Oswalt. She passed away, but like maybe yeah. a year before this guy was actually caught and was like, mm -hmm. and apparently in large part responsible for the case being, you know, brought solved. back to the public consciousness, or brought yeah. to the public consciousness and then solved. So, I'm really interested to hear more about it. And there's a lot of documentary, like there's a lot of like, she had a podcast, she had done like a blog and everything. So they have a lot of like information from her specifically. It's all from her perspective essentially. And then talking about people who helped her out along the way. It's pretty good. And like, as far as a, a true crime, um, like deep dive, it's pretty fucking good. And it, it has that unique flavor to it because it's also about the citizen journalists that are, and then eventually journalists that, were taking this upon themselves to solve. It's pretty interesting. Um, and then last but not least, as a palate cleanser for all that really heavy shit, I watched Jackass 3. It was disgusting and great. <laughs> Sweet. Round it out. <laughs> yep. Juice, what you been watching? So we cast it like three days ago, and I don't think I've like legit watched anything. Like not even, like I don't think I've watched anything at all during that time but i did um want to give a quick shout out i post this on our slack channel and there's this website if if you enjoy horror gaming um it's it looks like it's like mostly pc based stuff i wanted to see i'm gonna search on my xbox later and just see if they're available like in the store but there's this website called it's itch.io so itch.io and it's got a ton of like indie games and a lot of them are free 
And it's got some really cool free horror indie games on there. Um, there was one I posted um, that I was watching like some footage for and stuff like that that looked really cool. It was called Yarn Town. And it's a mix. It's kind of described as a mix between Zelda and Bloodborne. So it's like a horror, like Zelda game, which I grew up like on Zelda. I know Randy did too. Um, but it's like old school Zelda. Like it looks like a Link to the Past, like SNES style Zelda. Um, it's I'm not like a PC gamer though, unfortunately. But this one was kind of tempting me a little bit. I want to see if any of these games are available at all on console but if if you like horror gaming if you want to try out some like indie horror gaming and like like i said a lot of them are free and stuff then yeah check out that website um check out that game yarn town it looks like it was developed like with a lot of like love and care and stuff so um and if you like zelda the idea of zelda mixed with horror then um then you should probably check it out so yeah all you creepy pasta fans, get out there! You'd love it. Yeah. So, but that that was it. I, I legit have not watched a single thing. So, Bob, Yo. what have you been watching? Not a lot. Um, I have been working my way back through the Righteous Gemstones, uh, which mm. is an HBO original series. Oh there's, yeah. There's a there's only one season out so far, but it's it was created by Danny McBride. Uh, written by him and uh, his his friends. So if you've seen any of his previous HBO shows, uh, like Eastbound and Down or Vice Principals, you kind of know the type of humor that you're in for here. This particular show is about um, you know a super rich family of uh, pastors, and they they own a mega church, and they're just really corrupt, mostly terrible people. Um, and it's totally hilarious. fictional. It's hilarious. Goodman's in it. Yeah, John Goodman, Goodman is, is, in it. is the uh, the dad, the patriarch. The dad, yeah. And um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's incredibly funny. It's also uh, it's got a old, oh what's that actor's name? The dude from uh, McBride, the Hateful Eight. No. Um, oh um, yeah. What is that? Yeah. His name? Uh, <laughs> I can't remember his name. It's going to kill me. Oh, uh, oh my God. I'm going for it. You yeah. keep talking. Uh, it's going to blow our minds. Yeah. Walton Goggins. Walton Goggins. Yep. Thank you. My I like that dude, man. We all blanked on that. Sorry, yeah. Walton. Yeah. God damn. Yeah. Walton Goggins definitely plays my favorite character in this show where he's sort of um, the estranged uncle of the family and he's trying to uh, kind of get back into the gemstones uh, money, you know, trying to weasel his way back in there. And he is just a filthy old man, a disgusting, filthy old man. <laughs> it is so funny. Everything he says is hilarious. He's giving beers to his like nephews, getting them fucked up. He marries this girl. That's like maybe a third of his age and just says awful, hilarious things. That dude is amazing. Um, also, I watched this movie a couple weeks ago that I don't know if I ever actually mentioned on the show. Um, but it's, it's Nosferatu, the vampire. It's the 1979 version of Nosferatu. Do you guys remember me talking about this previously? If so, you can stop. I don't think vaguely. Uh, well, this is, this is the, the Werner Herzog version of Nosferatu, Mm -hmm. a German director. I'd never seen this before. And, and full disclosure, I don't think I've ever seen the original Nosferatu all the way through. I've I've just seen like bits, like clips here and there. Um, so I can't shame. I can't accurately compare this to that, but I loved this movie. This this shit was oh, really okay. solid. Um, Interesting. Herzog's fucking great. Yeah. The, well, no, nineteen seventy. Okay. Yeah, nineteen seventy nine. Um, the uh, the filmography like is gorgeous. Um, just m- the vast majority of the shots in this are are fairly painterly. Uh, the <laughs> the the character of Nosferatu played by Klaus Kinski in this version, just kills it. Uh, does a fantastic job. And the character of Nosferatu is like so incredibly uh, entwined with the plague in this movie. And I really, really mm. like that. Like as he comes into oh, town, cool. uh, the uh, town is like overrun with rodents. And just the way that they kind of play with that theme is really, really cool. Um, 
I definitely wow. rec- recommend the shit out of Nosferatu the Vampire. <laughs> wow. wow. I wonder if old Eggers is still doing um, a Nosferatu. Uh, I don't think he was ever official, officially doing it. He did mention like wanting to for sure, but I don't think he ever got a good oh, he, I thought it was. Okay. The, yeah. Mind. The next movie he's doing is like a Viking movie. I forget what it's called. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. If he wanted to make a fucking Nosferatu movie, I'm sure it would be fantastic. Uh, but yeah, that's really all I've been watching. Uh, so yeah, we got one more segment to get into. We're, we got to work into the hotline scream. If you are listening and want to call and leave us a voicemail, you can hit us up at 904-638-3231. We have two voicemails this week. Uh, first up, I think we're going to hear from old Jackie B. Let's hear what Jackie has to say. What up? Boys, it's Jackie B calling from Chicago. I just listened to the episode you guys put out about deathbed. Um, and at the end of that episode, uh, Bob mentioned seeing that movie Relic, which I actually saw that this week too. Um, so I kind of wanted to give my two cents. Um, I actually was able to see that movie in theaters, which is pretty cool. There's an independent theater in Chicago called The Music Box. And they recently reopened with, you know, obviously some standards and procedures about keeping everyone safe. Uh, but I got to see it in one of their screening rooms. So there were only like eight other people in the theater. So that was pretty cool. It was kind of weird being in the theater again, but it also was really nice. I missed, I missed seeing movies in theaters. So, um, I kind of liked Relic. I, you know, wasn't sure how I felt about the ending, um, but I feel like from what I've been, I, I feel like I've been thinking about that movie a lot since I saw it, and it seems like the kind of movie that I would like more after a second rewatch. Um, so yeah, I'd be interested to see kind of how my how my opinion changes from a, from a rewatch, but I've been watching some good stuff at home too. I watched this movie by Varium on Amazon Prime. Don't know if you guys have watched that, but I really enjoyed it. I thought the um, kid in that movie would give the kid in Babadook a run for his money for the most punchable face. Um, So, yeah, I would be interested here. If you guys have seen that movie, what your thoughts are on Vivarium. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, I hope you guys are doing well. I've been enjoying the content and that's all I got. Keep chilling. Thanks for calling in Jackie. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Relic is all right. I'm sure that if I had seen it in an actual theater, I would have enjoyed it a little bit more. And also it like, it really, it deals with the theme of dementia, um, in a very like metaphorical way. And I have been fortunate enough not to know anybody who has experienced dementia like firsthand so maybe if i had done some research and then watched relic again i might get a little bit more out of it it's i right. i don't know have you guys seen uh vivarium i've been meaning to watch that so I, uh, my the art house theater that i go to um that does like a lot of the korean movies with english subtitles they are actually showing it right now and like i keep forgetting about it so i want to see it before it's out of there Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how long they're going to be showing it. So I need to set a reminder so I can get out there and watch it. Um, but I want to, um, I'm curious. Yeah, me too. Um, I know it's on yeah. Amazon prime in the States now. So it's, it's super easy to find. I just haven't had the time to get to it just yet. I'm curious about it. Yeah, I, mean, I would, I would check that out. And also I'm, I'm curious to know about the relic now too. Like, uh, just hearing a couple of different perspectives on it. I didn't know like that about its metaphorical content. And that is pretty intriguing to me. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know. I also don't know anybody directly with that issue me neither. Um, in my life, but it is something that I think is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty much a real life horror. That's easy to tap into for people. So I'm yeah. curious how they handle it. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you had a little bit more context, as far as that disease is concerned, you might get a little bit, more out of the movie um Mm. but yeah so if you watch it maybe read wikipedia real quick or something i don't know okay Um, (laughs) but yeah real quick Um, oh god yes come with me thanks for come with me thanks for calling in jackie and uh hope you're you're staying safe and healthy in chicago uh we got one more one more voicemail from old west let's see what west has to say 
Hey guys, it's Wesley. Um, uh, just to answer Randy's question on uh, the deathbed episode that he said at the end, which I, I didn't watch that movie, it looks stupid, but um, if I was deathbed, what would I rather eat? And um, I'd probably rather eat... That's probably a good idea. Like that's That seems yeah. like a nice balanced meal for your bed. Damn, and Wes listening to our show without even watching the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. I, in in that case, I feel us. like that's that's going to be the case for 90% of whoever <laughs> listens to that episode. That's true. Probably <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Deathbed, The Bed That Eats Rigatuni is the sequel coming at you <laughs> <laughs> from Straight Showing. That's it. Yeah, straight and chilling exclusive. Next, right you can hear the bed moaning now. <laughs> oh, give me my rigatoni. Where's my rigatoni? A uh, rigatoni? It's a special. Once we start our dish. own streaming service, right, boys? That's going to be our straight chilling exclusive. Yeah. Yes. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> straight streaming coming at you this fall. <laughs> Kicking it off with Deathbed the Bed That Eats Rigatuni. We got a lot of work to do. We got a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of work. <laughs> I got to get on that co- coding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get on it. I'm going to build it from away. scratch. <laughs> Rigatuni. Wow. <laughs> uh, thanks for weighing in there, Wes. And uh, way to use Randy's bump against him. I like it. Against me? I'm I more than <laughs> thrilled that that happened. <laughs> yeah, I guess it was really just with you. Bob's always looking for conflict. That's oh all. my oh. god! <laughs> Get out of here with your bullshit. Oh, dude, that's your biggest. Yeah, I made Bob. <laughs> oh man! It includes the phrase "Oh god." Again. Hey, uh, so here's a question. Okay. Yes. For the for uh, if you want to call in to our hotline screen, please do and answer the following question: What is going to be? the first Halloween movie you watch and this our newly burgeoning Ooh, Halloween season. And I don't mean the franchise for, necessarily, yeah. but what are you going to kick off your season with? Let us know. And That's tell a us good what. call. Our buddy Matt was watching Halloween. He was like, I'm yeah. going in on Halloween. He's, I was yeah. like, Godspeed, yeah. brother. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Start he's, gonna, he's doing me, tantric Halloween. At this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for me, it's Halloween season for sure, but I, man, I don't know if my body can handle it. Every now and then. My body is not ready. Yeah. Ev- dude, every now and then, this um, summer has been pretty, um, like, mild as far as the heat goes in Seoul. And, like, at night, it can actually get cool and, like, a cold breeze will blow by and I'll be like, my body for a second thinks, like, it's fall. And I'm like, no, <laughs> shit, God, no. It's, it's still July. <laughs> Aren't you being a little stupid? False alarm. So, oh, man, man, watching watching Halloween straight up with the pumpkins and everything out there, that that would really... Pumpkins. <laughs> yeah, man, that's... Uh, that's that, you, you gotta really be steely resolve to maintain your Halloween spirit from now yeah. until Halloween. But if yeah. you're capable of doing it, you do it. And regardless of whether or not you're capable of it, I just want to know what you're going to break your seal with. What are yeah. you doing? Yeah. yeah. What do you what's start your, with? What's your go-to? And also, when do you start? I think that's a yeah, good also, follow up. That's true. Yeah. Do you wait till September? The, do you wait till October? So, Are you following the Matt rubric, the Soju rubric? Are you yeah. uh, giving no, it plenty of time? We can talk about it next time. Yeah. We yeah, can talk yeah. about it next time. We'll give our thoughts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, weigh in. Let us know. You can give us a call at 904-638-3231. And that's going to do it for us this week. It's straight chilling. We're going to be back next week with yet another Patreon pick. This one's kind oh, of shit. a big one. This this is Miles's pick. And, uh, I don't he, even know what it is. Yeah, he <laughs> wanted us to review the original 1954 Godzilla. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a big one. Huh? Right. Gojira. Man, Gojira. this is like our fourth Godzilla fa- film. In At like least not- third. I th- yeah, it's yeah. our third, I think. It's a okay. I, th- sure. I thought we covered that re or like that reboot one that came out a couple years ago. Oh yeah, yeah. We, I think did, we yeah, did both we did the of the new ones, ones and, um, and Shin. Shin Godzilla. And yes, this Shin, is our yeah. fourth. Yeah, you're right. Okay, yep. number Look four. That. Sweet deal. Um, so Pretty yeah. much experts now. Oh, <laughs> totally, <yeah>. totally. <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> check check out Godzilla and get ready for next week's show. Until then, please rate, review, and subscribe to us on iTunes. Follow us on Twitter at str 8 underscore chilling on Instagram at straight chilling podcast. You can send us an e- email through our website, straight chilling podcast.com. If you want to join in on these Slack channel conversations, let us know on one of those social media outlets and I'll send you a link to join in on the Slack channel fun. Slack channel has been like off the chain recently. It's popping. popping off. It's, yeah. it's getting to a point where like, I can't keep up. There's there was over a so hundred. I think I woke up to 120 messages just in the general this morning. Yeah. There's the a lot of convo <laughs> happening. Yeah. It's popping off. Yeah. The community is growing. It's getting stronger. And I love it. It's great. It's fantastic. If you want to join, let us know. Um, and until next week, as always, all you mother truckers, please keep chilling. Haunt the boat. Find the outro here. Rigatoonies. There we go. <laughs>